Kennedy, the Academy of Raleigh. Are you ready? Yes, Your Majesty. Your time begins now. trouble your majesty it's what i was saying to the queen last night uneasy lies the head that wears the crown that was how i put it ah profound and original thought which may very well go down to posterity you mean it may go down well with posterity <laughs> i hope so remind me to tell you another little thing i told her majesty something about her fierce life beating at the throne <laughs> posterity would like that too well what is it it fits in the matter for Royal Highness's wedding. Oh, yes. As your majesty is aware, the young Prince Simon arrived today to seek her Royal Highness's hand in marriage. He's been traveling in distant lands, and as far as I know, he hasn't, um... Well, he hasn't. He, he hasn't heard anything yet? It's a bit difficult to put this tactfully, your majesty. Do your best, and I will tell you afterward how you got on. <laughs> the Prince Simon will naturally assume that her Royal Highness has customary so customary as to be, in my own poor opinion, slightly monotonous has what one might call the inevitable, so inevitable as to be, again, in my own poor opinion, slightly mechanical has what I like to think of it, fortunately thoughtless, icily regular, splendid. What you are trying to say in the fewest words possible <laughs> is that my daughter is not beautiful. Her beauty is certainly elusive, your majesty. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It has eluded you, it has eluded me, it has eluded everybody who has seen her. Even the court painter. His last words were, well, I did my best. <laughs> his successor is now painting the view of the water lilies across London and West Turret. He says his doctor has advised him to keep to the landscape. It is unfortunate, Your Majesty, but there it is. One can just not see how it could have occurred. You don't think she takes after me at all, do you? You don't detect a likeness? Most certainly not, Your Majesty. Good. Your predecessor did. <laughs> I've often wondered what happened to my predecessor. <laughs> well, now you know. Looking on the bright side, although Her Royal Highness is strictly speaking beautiful. Not truthfully speaking beautiful. Yet she is a great beauty of character. My dear Chancellor, we're not considering her character, but her chances of getting married. You do observe that there is a distinction. It, yes, Your Majesty. Look at it from a suitor's point of view. If a girl is beautiful, it is easy to assume that she has somewhere, tucked away inside her, an equally beautiful character. It is impossible to assume that an unattractive girl, however elevated in character, has tucked away inside her an equally beautiful face. <laughs> that is, so to speak, not where you want it, tucked away. Quite so, Your Majesty. That does not discount the fact that Princess Camilla is quite the nicest person in the kingdom. She is indeed, Your Majesty, with, I need hardly to say, the exception of Your Majesty, and Her Majesty. Your exceptions are tolerated for their loyalty and condemned for their extreme fatuity. Thank you, Your Majesty. As an adjective for your king, the word nice is ill-chosen. As a word for your queen, it is ill-chosen. Ah, uh, talking about Camilla. As always, my dear, you're right. Hmm. This fellow Simon, what's he like? Uh, nobody has seen him, your majesty. How old is he? Five and twenty, I understand. In twenty-five years, he must have been seen by somebody. <laughs> but what I meant, your majesty, is that no detailed report of him has yet reached this part of the kingdom. Say that he has the usual personal advantages and qualities expected of a prince. 
He's been traveling in distant and dangerous lands. Ah, nothing wrong with his eyes? Sunstroke or anything? <laughs> Not that I'm aware, Your Majesty, but as I wish this venturing to say to the king, Princess Camilla's character and disposition are so outstanding. Stop and nonsense! You remember what happened when we had the tournament of love last year. I myself was not present, and I had not the... I was abroad, and I never heard the full story. No, it was the other fool. They all rode up to Camilla to pay their homage. It was the first time they had seen her. The heralds blew their trumpets and announced that she would marry whichever suit was left to the master of the field when all but one had been unhorsed. The trumpets were blown again, they charged enthusiastically into the fight, and... Don't do that. I'm sorry, my dear. And what happened? <laughs> they all simultaneously fell off their horses and assumed a posture of defeat. <laughs> One of them was not so quick as the others. I was very quick. I declared him the victor. At the feast of betrothal held that night... We were all very quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Chancellor announced that by the laws of the country, the suitor had to pass a further test. He to give the correct answer to a riddle. Such undoubtedly is the fact, Your Majesty. There are times for announcing facts and time for lo times for looking at things in a broad-minded way. Please remember that, Chancellor. Yes, Your Majesty. I invented the riddle myself. Quite an easy one. What is it which has four legs and barks like a dog? The answer is <laughs> a dog. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> yes, your majesty. <laughs> it isn't hard. He doesn't seem to find it so. He said an eagle. Then he said a serpent. A very high mountain with slippery sides. Two peacocks. A moonlit night. The day after tomorrow. Nobody could accuse him of not trying. I did. <laughs> what I meant to say was that nobody could fail to recognize in him an appearance of doggedness. <laughs> Finally, he said death. I nudged the key. Accepting the word nudge for a moment, I rubbed my ankle with one hand, clapped him on the shoulder with the other, and declared him the victor. He disappeared under a table, and quite frankly, I never saw him again. <laughs> His body was found in the boat the next morning. But what was he doing in the boat, Your Majesty? Bobbing about. Try not to ask needless questions. <laughs> it all just seems so strange. What does? That Princess Camilla, alone of all the other princesses one has ever heard of, she lacked that one invariable attribute of royalty, supreme beauty. That was your red and Malcolm. She came to the christening, and you know what she said. It was cryptic. Great Aunt Malcolm's besetting weakness. She came to my christening. She was 101 at the time. That was 51 years ago. What would that make her? 152, Your Majesty. <laughs> About that, yes. <laughs> she said that when I grew up, I would have all the happiness that my wife desired. <laughs> at the time, it struck me, well, when I say at the time, I was only a few weeks old, but it struck me as soon as anything could strike me. Well, I mean, of that sort, but well, work it out for yourself, Chancellor. It opens up a most interesting field of speculation. <laughs> No, naturally, I hadn't liked to dive into it with Her Majesty all that much. I have never heard anything less cryptic. She was wishing you extreme happiness. I don't think she was wishing me anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> However... <laughs> but what, Your Majesty, did she wish Her Royal Highness? Her other godmother, on my side, promised her the dazzling beauty for which all women in my family are famous. Uh, yes, yes, of course, Your Majesty. <laughs> And when Malcolm said that, what were her words? I give you with this kiss a wedding day surprise. Where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. I thought the last two lines were rather interesting, but what it meant... We can I... all see what it meant. She was called beauty, and where is it? Yorgren and Malcolm took it away from her. The wedding day surprise is that there will never be a wedding day. Young men being what they are, my dear, it would be much more surprising if they were. Well. Hello, Father. Yes. Oh, uh, fair sister H. Sorry. Don't go, Camilla. Shall I withdraw? You are aware, Camilla, that Prince Simon arrives today. He has arrived. They're just letting down the drawbridge now. Arrived? I must go. Oh, Father, must... you know what the drawbridge is like. It takes at least half an hour to let it down. It wants oil. Have you ever got to get oil? It wants a new drawbridge, Father. Shall I? <laughs> yes. Yes. 
You told him, of course, it's the only chance. About that, um... Then I will. The maid, Dulce... Uh, I'll have her sent you immediately. <clears throat> You've told Camilla? Well, I was just going to when... Then uh... you'd better do it now. My dear, are you sure? It's the only chance we have left. My daughter! Camilla! It's time we talk seriously about marriage. Yes, father? It's time you learned some facts of life. Yes, father? Now, the great fact about marriage is that once you get married, you live happily ever after. All our history books affirm this. And your own experience too, father. Let us confine ourselves to history. <laughs> yes, father. Well, there may be an exception here or there, which, as it were, proves the point that... Well, let us leave that for a moment. Uh, go on, Father. You're just going to say that an exception here or there proves the rule that all princesses are beautiful. Let's leave that for a moment. The point is, it doesn't matter how you get married or who you marry, but that you get married. Because you'll be happily ever after when you do. Do you follow me? Yes, Father. Now, your mother and I have a little plan. Was that it? I'm going out of the door just now. Uh, yes. It concerns your waiting maid. Father, I have several. Only one that uh, leaps to the eye, so to speak. The one with, well, everything. <laughs> Dulcibella. That's the one. It is our plan that at the first meeting she should pass herself off as the princess. A, a harmless rule of which we'll find frequent record in the history books. And allure Prince Simon to his, that is to say, bring him up to the, uh... well, the point is, is that the wedding will take place immediately after the meeting, as quietly as possible, and naturally in view of the fact that your great aunt Malkin is 152, and since you will be wearing the family bridal veil, which is no doubt how the custom arose, the surprise after the ceremony will be his. Do you follow me? Your attention seems to be wandering. I was just wondering why you needed to tell me. Just a precautionary measure, in case you were to come into contact with the prince, in which case you would pass yourself off as the... A harmless maid. ruse, of which also you will find frequent record of in history books. Exactly. But the occasion need not arise. The woman does so well. <sighs> Now, Camilla, why don't you just go, and I will come to you there. When I will come to you in your apartment when we are ready for that ceremony. <laughs> Come in, my dear. There is nothing to be afraid of. Don't be afraid. Has Her Majesty told you what you are to do? Yes, Your Majesty. Well, let's see how well you can do it. You are sitting here, we will say. Now, imagine that I am Prince Simon. You are the beautiful Princess Camilla, whom he has never seen. <laughs> this is an important moment in your life, and you will see that a giggle will not be helpful. I am announced. His Royal Highness, Prince Simon. <laughs> That's me being announced. <laughs> Remember what I said about the giggling? <laughs> now, you have a far away look upon your face. <laughs> far away than that. No, 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 that's, that's too far. You were sitting there, thinking beautiful thoughts in maiden meditation. <laughs> Fancy free, as I remember saying to Her Majesty once. Speaking of somebody else, but uh, fancy free and with mouth definitely shut. <laughs> now, I advance and fall upon one knee. You extend your hand graciously. <laughs> graciously, you're not trying to push him in the face. Better. Now, I take your hand in mine and so kiss it. <laughs> Perhaps not so ardently as that. <laughs> More like this. And and I will say, Your Royal Highness, this is the... Your Royal Highness, this is the proudest... Uh, your Royal Highness, I shall ever be... Well, the point is, is that he will say something, and that it will be complimentary, and then he will take your hand in both of his, press it to his heart, and then what do you say? Coo. No, not coo. <laughs> Never had anyone do that to me before. That also strikes the wrong note. <laughs> what you want to say is, oh, Prince Simon. Say it. Oh, Prince Simon! <laughs> no, no. 
You needn't shout until he has said, what? Two or three times. <laughs> Always consider the possibility that he is not deaf. And giving the words a dying fall, let them play around his head like a flight of doves. Oh, Prince Simon! <laughs> Frankly, try and keep the idea in your head of a flight of doves rather than a flight of panic-stricken elephants. <laughs> and you'll be all right. Now, I'm going to get up, and you must, as it were, waft me into the seat by your side. <laughs> waft, wafting. You're not trying to save a drowning man. That's another idea altogether. Useful at times, but at the moment, inappropriate. <laughs> wafting. Prince Simon will put the necessary muscles into play. All you require to do is to indicate by gracious movement of the hand the seat you require him to take. Now. It's <laughs> better. Well, here we are. Now, I think you give me a look, something, let us say, halfway between a worshipful attitude and wild abandonment, with an undertone of regal dignity, touched, as it were, with good comradeship. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> Frankly, that didn't quite get it. <laughs> there was a little something missing, an absence, as it were, of all the qualities I asked for. <laughs> and in that place, an odd resemblance to an unsatisfied fish. <laughs> Let us try and get at it another way. A Dulcibella, have you a young man of your own? Oh, yes, Your Majesty. He's ever so smart. He's an archer. Well, not as you may say a real archer. He works in the armory, but, oh, Balanus, you know who I mean. The captain of the guard says the next day they ever has to shoot my egg will take place. And knowing father and how it is with me and egg and me being the princess's mate, so and not being able to marry till he's a real soldier, but he's ever so kind and loving and smart. Things he says. Once I said to him, egg, I said... I, I rather fancy, Dulcibella, that if you think of egg all the time, say as little as possible, and when thinking of egg, see to it that the mouth is no more than partially open, you'll be all right. Now, I will show you where you want to sit and wait for his royal highness, and remember, waft, not... Swing and a crab for the battlements, and don't ask me to remember it all. You mean you cross the moat by that beech tree? Yes, I'm so tired of hanging about. Oh, but it's terribly dangerous. That's why I'm so exhausted. Very shook. Of course, it's different for me. Say that again. I must have been at home. It's different for me because I'm used to it. Besides, I'm so much lighter. You mean that you. Oh, yes, often. And now I thought I was brave. At least I did until five minutes ago, and now I don't again. But you are, 
I think it's wonderful to do straight off the first time. No, you do. Oh no, where's the time? You, you crash. Well, you only call the most. Only? Can you swim? Of course. So you swam to the castle walls and called for help. And then they fished you out and walked you. And then you tried again. Well, if that isn't perfect. You no, know, I swam back and did it once. Well, I tried again at once. It wasn't until the third time that I actually got it. You see, I was afraid I might lose my nerve. Afraid she might do so nerve. There's a way of getting over from this side, too. A tree goes out of the wall and you jump to another tree. But I don't think it's quite so easy. Not quite so easy? Good, you must show me. Oh, I will. Perhaps we might be better off if you taught me how to swim first. I've often heard about swimming, but... You can't swim! Don't look so surprised. There's plenty of other things I can't do well. Tell you all from as soon as we have a couple years to spare. You can't swim, and yet you cross by the beech tree. And you're ever so much heavier than I am. Now who's brave? You keep talking about how light you are. I must see if there's a bit to it. Stand up. Well? Oh! You're right, Gus, but I could hold you here forever. You're very lovely. Do you know how lovely you are? Yes. Why do you laugh? Aren't you time holding me? Frankly, yes. <laughs> I exaggerate when I said I could hold you forever. When you've been hanging by the arms for ten minutes, over a very deep moat, wondering if it's too late to learn how to swim. <laughs> oh, what time did you start? She likes to hold you forever. How did you laugh? Oh, it's a, that's a little private joke of mine. Comes to that, I've got one. Shall we exchange them? Mine's very private. Only one other woman in the whole world knows him. That's all. Mine's just as private. One other man knows him, that's all. What fun, I love secrets. Well, here's mine. When I was born, one of my godmothers promised that I should be very beautiful. How right she was. But the other one said this. <clears throat> I give you with this kiss. A wedding day surprise, where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. And nobody knew what it meant, and I grew up very plain. And then one day, I met my godmother in the forest. It was my tenth birthday. Nobody knows this, except you. Except us. Except us. And she told me what a gift meant. It meant that I was beautiful, but everyone else was to go on being ignorant and thinking me plain until my wedding day. Because she said she didn't want me to grow up spoiled and willful and vain, as I would have if everyone had always been telling me how beautiful I am. Because she said the best thing in the world is to always be quite sure of yourself, but not to expect admiration from other people. So, ever since then, my mirror has told me I'm beautiful, and everyone else thinks me plain. But I get quite a lot of fun out of it. Well, seeing that Dulcibella is the result, I can see that your grandmother is very, very wise. Now tell me your secret. It isn't such a pretty one. You see, Prince Simon was going to woo Prince Camilla, and he heard that she was beautiful and haughty and imperious. All things you would have been if your grandmother hadn't been so wise. Being a very ordinary looking fellow himself, he was afraid she wouldn't think much of him. So he suggested to one of his attendants, a man by the name of Carlo, of extremely attractive appearance, that he should attempt to win the princess's hand. And then at the last moment they would change places. How would they do that? The prince would be married in full armor with his visor down. Oh, what fun! Please, isn't it? Very, very, very. Hey. Not so terribly funny. Why do you keep laughing? Well, that's another secret. If it comes to that, I've got another one in my sleeve. Shall we exchange again? All right. You go first this time. Well, I am not Carlo. I am Sun. Oh! What is it? It's a crab. <laughs> I was saying, I am Simon. Oh, shall I rub it for you? I am Simon. Is that better? I am Simon. I know. Well, how did you know? Well, you told me. I want you to swoon or something. Why? History records many similar ruses. Really? I haven't read much of history. 
But it's being profoundly original. Oh no. Now I'll tell you my secret. For reasons very much like your own, the Princess Camilla, who is held to be extremely plain, feared to meet Prince Simon. Is the drawbridge down yet? Do your people give a faint surprise cheer every time it lets down? Naturally. But it came down about three minutes ago. Then at this very moment, your man Carlo is declaring his passionate love for my maid Dulcibella. That I think is funny. Dulcibella, by the way, is in love with a man she calls Egg. So Carlo's not getting carried away. Carlo's getting married to a girl he calls the Little Woman. <laughs> so I guess nothing to fear. I don't know if you heard, but I said, or I as good as said that I am the Princess Camilla. I wasn't surprised. History of which I read a great deal records many similar reasons. Simon? Camilla. <laughs> May I try holding you again? Well? Sweetheart. You uh. see, when you lifted me up before, you said you were very lovely. And my godmother said that the first man to, to whom I should seem lovely was the man that I should marry. So I knew then that you were Simon and that I should marry you. I knew as soon as I saw you that I should marry you, even if you were a Dulcibella. By the way, which one of you am I marrying? When she lifts her veil, it will be Camilla. Then goodbye, Camilla, until so you lift your veil. Goodbye, Simon, until you raise your visor. <laughs> the King, Queen, and Chancellor with Prince Simon. <laughs> Sir, Cap, Cap. <laughs> who and what is this? More importantly, who and what are all these? <laughs> My attendant, Carlo, Your Majesty. He will, with your majesty's permission, prepare me for the ceremony. Ah, yes, certainly. Your maid, Dulcibella, is it not, my love? I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> she will prepare her royal highness. Most important. I apologize if I've done wrong, your majesty, but I found the young gentleman wandering and I... Of course, of course. We pulled it off. <laughs> <laughs> Have I, your majesty's approval, to put the final test to his royal highness? Is this safe? Certainly. I've only just told her. <clears throat> Remember, a dog. <laughs> <laughs> By the constitution of the country, a suitor to a royal highness's hand cannot be deemed successful until he has given the correct answer to a riddle. The last of answered incorrectly, thus failed to win his bride. And by coincidence, fell into the boat. I now must ask if you're prepared for the ordeal. Absolutely. Very well. I may mention some slight sort of interest to our visitor that the same riddle is not allowed to be asked on two successive occasions. What? This one is just interesting to recall. was propounded exactly a century ago. We must take it as a portent omen that it was truly solved. I may want by saw directly. The riddle is this. What is it which has four legs and muse like a cat. <laughs> a dog. <laughs> According to the records of the occasion which I refer, the correct answer would seem to be... Your Majesty, how about Mr. Speak, naturally, through your highness, not justifying himself on such an occasion, but I think with your majesty's most gracious permission. Yes, 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 yes. In our country, we have an animal to which we've given the name dog. Or in the local dialect of most mountainous regions, doggy. Sits by the fireside and purrs. Purrs like anything. When it needs milk, which is its staple food, it mews. Mews like nobody's business. <laughs> it has four legs. One at each corner. <laughs> in some countries, I understand this animal is called a cat in one distant country, to which his royal highness and I penetrate, served by the very curious name of Hippopotamus. <laughs> That's right. Do you remember when that ginger colored hippopotamus used to climb on my shoulder and lick my ear? <laughs> I shall never get it, sir. So you see, Your Majesty. Yes, yes, yes. I think that about explains it. You were just about to agree. <laughs> Undoubtedly, Your Majesty. <laughs> May I be the first to congratulate His Royal Highness on solving the riddle so accurately? You may be the first to see that all is in order for an immediate wedding. Yes, Your Majesty. 
Doubtless, Prince Simon, you will wish to retire and prepare for the ceremony. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Your Majesty, I have a mission to attend this royal highness. It's the custom for the princes of the royal blood to be married in full armor, a matter of which requires a certain adjustment. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, a young man, you have a certain quality of quickness which I admire. Remind me to reward you in any way which pleases you. Your Majesty is ever gracious. May I ask my lord after the ceremony? Oh, of course, yes. Now, a young woman. <laughs> Good morning. Make yourself scarce. You have done your work excellently, and we will see that you and your. What does it say? Egg, Your Majesty! You and your egg are not forgotten. Coo! <laughs> oh, wait for me, Lord Sabella! My dear, I think we may congratulate ourselves. As I remember saying to somebody once, you have not lost a daughter. You have gained a son. <laughs> How does he strike you? Stupid. <laughs> I thought they made quite a handsome pair, the two of them. Both stupid. <laughs> I said nothing of stupidity. I was simply stating that they were both extremely handsome. That is the important thing, after all. Or is it? What do you think of Prince Simon, Camilla? I adore him. We shall be so happy together. Ah, I told you so. Happily ever after. Run along and get ready. Yes, mother. My dear, have we been wrong about Camilla this whole time? It seems she wasn't looking quite so plain just now. Did you notice anything? Just the excitement of the marriage? Ah, yes. That would account for it. <laughs> 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 